Welcome everyone to another episode of 30 Minutes with a Modern Mystic. Today's topic is a greater reality. Welcome, Michael. Thank you, Sasha, and uh, welcome to everybody who's listening. And uh, I can't help but comment, Sasha's beginning to look very much like a person who fits in in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> it's only the backdrop. Or is it the shirt? Oh, no, the shirt. The shirt. <laughs> I actually, I had a girl today staring at this shirt, and after she stared for a while, I looked at her and did like. <laughs> it's either Hawaii or Florida. <laughs> okay, so we're talking about a greater reality. Okay, well, what is a greater reality? The simple situation is that most people live in a lesser reality. Now, be clear, as always, in, we're never, I'm never talking criticism and judgment. I'm just talking what the way it is. And uh, with our physical body, with our, our five senses, our eyes and our ears, etc., we see a lesser reality. Basically, you would call it a personal reality. Um, if you... And everybody has a different personal reality. If, for instance, there was an, a car collision and um, six or eight people saw it from different places and the police wanted them as witnesses, they would keep them apart because each one has their own personal reality and each one sees it in their way. And somewhere in all that, they're going to find a common path. But if one, if they put them in a group and one person stood out the spokesman and said what he saw, everybody else would agree. It's easier. They just agree. Uh, but I must have got that wrong. So they all slip into one, put into one. So we have personal realities, and then we have consensus reality. And consensus reality is where all personal realities should fit in the consensus reality. So we had a completely different consensus reality, shall we say, in Florida than they did in the other states of America. And a whole lot of Americans, I've learned, are wanting to get into Florida. There's an, you've got the biggest migration going from the rest of America into Florida probably ever. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, your, your governor, Ron DeSantis, is doing it right. And uh, anyway, and so... We have all these different realities, but above all that, because we are magnificent, metaphysical, multidimensional, immortal, eternal beings of love, the power of creation, and of light, the illumination of eternity, because that is our truth, that aspect of us, which is the greater aspect, lives in a greater reality. And in that greater reality, which you can um, you can see through your metaphysical body. You can see through metaphysical eyes. You can see. You can experience it metaphysically, but it it sort of brings home the fact that we all live in two realities simultaneously. We live in two time zones. We live in linear time physically and biologically, and we live in all time occupies the same moment, spherical time, metaphysically, in a greater reality. So we're sort of doing this all at the same time. And uh, where I would have thought we were confused enough already without needing this. And so, it, so what I do in metaphysical travel on that is I move my focus of self away from the physical, and biological self into the metaphysical self, and then I experience a greater reality. That's the basis of what I'm talking about. Now, my first question would be, has it always been this way for us humans? I would, now that's an interesting question. Has it always been this way? Intu my intuition says yes, it's always been this way, and, and that the shaman, and uh, the more ancient races of us were very aware of it, very aware of it. Um, but as we developed the subconscious, which was a long time ago, and became dominated by the subconscious, which then, um, and then that we were 
maneuvered toward a false development, overdevelopment of the left brain. So we became the left brain dominant people that about 85% is today. As that all happened, <coughs> we lost touch with it. Until today, most people would laugh at me what I just said and say the man's an idiot. And some of my friends that I knew when I was a young man are the same because my path, I kept growing toward this and they have stayed with normality. And, uh, and that's sort of a bit sad, I think, that we can grow older without growing wiser and encompassing a greater landscape of life. I think there's a lot of proof that that's possible. <laughs> um, you're not young, you're young enough still. You you haven't reached the age where you look at people you knew well and look at them and think, wow, what happened? Didn't you just go beyond that? Didn't that stir you, that deep feeling? No, it didn't. They just wanted to get away from it. It was uncomfortable. Now, if you're saying it's always been this way, this coexistence of those two realities in... And what I'm saying is it's moved in and out. Okay. We've had realities where we were completely aware of the physical and the metaphysical. Okay, got it. Now, from a from a divine perspective or from a creation perspective, what would you suppose is the purpose or could be the purpose of such a design? Okay, the design, I'm pretty sure... Um, The design is that we are all here to learn the principles of creation. And thus, we each of us create our own life. And thus, you see the mass all have their personal realities moving into one consensus reality, because that way they feel safe. If everybody never was able to merge them and everybody had their own personal reality, as you will find in a if you step from this reality down one into a lower reality that's their reality they all have a completely their personal reality is not shared they don't have a consensus reality so every day is like a fight a battle to survive in this and they have would you believe they have a higher tech than we do but the technology is disgusting It's complete exploitation of human and of nature. And uh, and so it's very much worse than down here. If you suddenly landed there, you'd say, okay, this is hell. So on our um, three-dimensional level of, um, of expression, because there are so many, let's say, parallel universes, parallel realities, there are so many. On ours, you know, this is the way we do it, and... Uh, What was the question? <laughs> Let's just continue with what you said, because there is one point that is not really clear to me. So from an evolutionary perspective, you're saying that oh. there is a, let's say, a lower frequency dimension where each person has his own, his or her own uh, personal reality. But then that also seems to be the further advanced stage of human spiritual development, correct? Because um... uh, because it's all based in illusion. It's all based in fear and terror. And they're frightened of each other. So the further down the vibration, the, 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 the bigger the separation. The greater the sense of separation. The greater yes. the I mean, sense of separation. The next evolutionary step, it goes, it's gone. And then Even... our sense of... I'm cons- oh. oh, sorry. Even though you and I know it isn't there, nevertheless, we have to experience it because our physical bodies are made that way. So, so what your so, question was, how, how does this fit in with the divine? And so the answer to that is, we're here to learn the principles of creation. Thus, we create our own lives. And to a remarkable degree, we create our own bodies. We create our own sicknesses. We create our own health. Um, but the big mass of humanity doesn't believe that and has put that aside. I do believe that, and I think the results might show for themselves. However, that is the way it is, whether we believe it or not. It makes no difference. And so the greatest principle behind that is cause and effect. So if I create metaphysical cause, 
then there is a physical effect. And therefore, you know, I learn, okay, that way of thinking leaves me very much victimized. I, I feel sick. I'm on a downhill path. So I will, instead of choosing fear and anger and pain, I will choose love. And you do that. Wow. My life's on the up and up. And so we're learning the principles of creation, except we're not. You know, I say we, maybe a few million are, um, quite a big number of million, but once you come to the billions, they're not. So going back to this evolutionary perspective of a very much separate consciousness, or at least a very strong sense of separation, having grown into a state where we now have a consensus reality, growing into a state where we have both a an elevated uh, awareness of us creating our own lives, but also a, an awareness of being in that consensus reality or how? growing to the world's state where as you begin to realize your own personal reality is still as best you can do, it's still based in sort of separation, then gradually more and more you surrender your personal reality. Um, you can't fully, not while you're in a body here, but you surrender it to a greater reality. And if you like, that greater, greater reality is the divine. And so you allow life and the divinity and love to express through you. And more and more you remove your obstinate, your um, your argument, your fight, your struggle, and, and you move into a state of trust. And trust to me is like a divine main avenue through life. And once you get on that path, under your feet it's like ice, and you've got roller skates on, and you just go wee, and it's always a gentle incline. And you just go wee along there, and suddenly you realize, oh my God, I've learned to balance. I don't, I'm no longer frightened of falling over. And that's a beautiful, you know, just you just keep going beautifully, trusting. Trust is the key. Trust is the avenue and love. But trust and love are two sides of the same coin. You can't really have one without the other. And I'm talking unconditional trust and love. Not, oh, I trust myself. And now, seemingly, we are in a time where um, that greater reality is in some ways being forced upon us and our state of consciousness decides. I mean, no, I disagree. It's not being forced upon us. We're being forced to wake up out of the dream and then we okay. see it or we don't or we don't. And okay, still I, a mass. I agree, yeah. Still a mass don't see it. But we're being pushed out of the dream because the dream is, it doesn't honor us. Um, like I've said before about when I was 35, I sort of had a, I couldn't have put it into words, but there was a fumbling, bumbling feeling inside me of what I'm now talking about. I wanted to get out of this dream. And um, and uh, I have a few metaphysical experiences that sort of reinforce that. And so I put aside working for a living on that. And um, it was very tough, hand to mouth. My path was pain and suffering, but I couldn't stop. I couldn't give up. People said to me, you're crazy. You don't have to do this. And they, and I was even crazier because my reply was, I do. I can't get off it. Just to give some maybe positive outlook, would you say that no matter what we do, no matter if it's this lifetime or another, no matter if it's in this current time of drastic change or another, at some point, eventually, each one will have to wake up to a greater reality? Absolutely. One million percent, certainly. Nobody will be left forever drifting in the abyss of, of separation, because it is an abyss. Nobody will be left. No soul will be left there forever. They will keep incarnating. When they say you leave the wheel of life, let's just say you move out of our third dimension where you, you die and you incarnate back. Of course, you don't die. It's a continuity of the soul self. But in the fifth dimension, 
instead of just dying at a certain age with a certain belief that this is it, then in that reality, nobody has that belief. And so it, it's not in the human consciousness. We choose when we go and we choose when we feel I've really experienced all I need to experience in this reality, which generally is around 300 years. And the difference between the person of 300 and about 100, um, they look the same, but the energy is completely different. At 300, the energy oh, is pretty powerful. And uh, they are revered. Us, we get stuck in old folks' homes. <laughs> we, we, don't do, we don't live in a way that honors us, but then each individual very few think in a way that honors them. And, you know, our thinking and the emotions that attend it are, and there's always the emotional attendance, that is the cre that's how we create our life. We don't sort of wake up one morning, okay, today I will have a Rolls Royce, I will have a big beach, I will have lovely women around me, and I will lose 50 years because that feels like a good idea. It doesn't work that way. Isn't it kind of ironic that we start out in a greater reality, then move through lessening our reality further and further until we are in complete negligence of where we came from, only to there, rediscover where we came from? There was a place where I think, let's just take a metaphor, the road branched left and right, one led to um, individuality and oneness. Well, hey, let's not go that way. Let's do this way. Um, identity and separation. Let's go and see what that's about. That's where we went. <laughs> that's the way we went. And uh, of course, some have done it better. And they've long, long, long ago left this and the way, way ahead. Because it's not like we've all got to stay together. But... Uh, you know, it's okay. We're we're um we're doing okay. We're this is the kindergarten of the of the universe, as it were. I mean, there are others, but this is the human one, and uh, it's it, it's okay. This uh, yeah, it is ironic because what we were designed to do was to learn that everything that we metaphysically create has a physical manifestation. And that's somehow where the subcon where we were pushed into we were manipulated, we were victimized. But before that, we were no longer honoring ourselves, and we're going back now a long time. Our thoughts on that, there was a complacency and arrogance and apathy was creeping in. And so we had to go down before we could rise again. And now we're rising. We've been going down for a long, long time, you know, as far as we're concerned, forever. But of course it isn't. And now those, every human being, I think there's going to be a flashpoint. Well, I've been told um, by some extra dimensional being that there will be a flashpoint. It has other names. Flashpoint, I don't know so what, as in? As in, and every human being will be aware of it. And every human being will have the opportunity, the opportunity to make a choice. It doesn't mean the opportunity will overwhelm their subconscious program unless they're ready. Some spark in there that says, you know, I'm ready. I want to move. I don't know. But the flashpoint will not um, dominate us. It will simply create an opportunity there for everyone to see but it won't force a choice will that be the, the new waypoint the choice is ours because that's our creation so wherever we move from here it will be our creation and nobody about to say well i didn't even have an opportunity that will be there so could that be looked at as the new waypoint kind of you were talking about that yeah, so before you mentioned the waypoint when we chose between identity and separation versus individuality and oneness, 
You know, that's an interesting one. This is why I like doing this with you, Paul. Your brain works differently from mine. And when I was told by this being about this flashpoint, I I thought about it, but not too much. And, and I didn't think. And you, although that's a metaphor I made, it, it could very well be something similar. It could very well be something similar. It makes a lot of sense. And in fact, even my intuition says yes, it makes a lot of sense. There's the opportunity to make a choice, a oneness and individuality, because we're not choosing. I read just the other day a um, football match, and some there was something happened, and they all the whole lot panicked and rushed out, killed about 130 people. Not one person was killed from the original cause of the panic. It's just, we're just mad. We just stampede out, run over children, elderly women, just knock them over. And in some stores in America, they have their bouncers on your Boxing Day sales to slow down the crowd because they run over people and, and tread them in to get a pair of socks. You have to wonder. <laughs> I was going to, I was going to make a joke, but I don't. Um, actually, actually, it's not funny. It's yeah. it really. Is. That's why I decided yeah. not to. Um, on a larger scale, on a cosmic scale, what is the, what is the place of the human design of the human being? The place of the human in a, being in a, in a greater reality. To pick up that topic, what is the place, the I role mean, of the human being? Obviously, nobody can answer such a question. I know. <laughs> but on the other hand, having explored quite a bit of the um, out there, which is not really out there at all, but we'll leave that one alone. Um, <laughs> having explored quite a lot of that, we have a design which a lot of beings have to go through vast span of life to finally um, find a design that is better than the one they have. So we have what you would call an advanced design. The fingers, the legs. Now there are beings who do this way better than we do. Their design is similar to us, um, but very, very much stronger, more flexible, um, a better mind, a better brain and everything. So we're moving along there. But the point we're moving toward and we, I will tell, say we have a long way to go, and that is one day we will be gods and goddesses and creating our own universe. I mean, what people don't get round today, and I said it to Carolyn 25 years ago, and she said that was one sort of big shock that she couldn't quite accommodate and eventually realised the truth of it, Today, each, each soul-bonded pair lives in their own universe. And so all these universes occupy the same space. And we live in what we think is one of them. It's not quite true, but I wouldn't um, argue with anybody about it if they didn't believe it. And there are about 49 billion universes. So what you've got to get your head around is sort of big out there. <laughs> And it's not shrinking. They used to say the shrinking universe once. Well, sorry, but as consciousness grows, so does the universe. It's time we contributed to our share of growing in consciousness. At this stage, the last cycle, we've grown in cleverness. And our cleverness, look what it's doing to us. Because that cleverness sees each thing as separate. And so when we haven't really grown in consciousness, which is along the path of individuality, um, one in the all, the all in the one, and the one um, and the all in the all, we haven't grown that direction as well as we could have done. So it's time for us to have the opportunity, and a lot have already taken it. Um, I And really, when you, if you move off the old track, let's say the main, the main, um, the more medium mundane track, which is not a judgment, if you move on that to the magnificent track, then 
that is a leap in consciousness. And, uh, and as you keep going, always taking the higher road. You know, I have met um, in Japan gods and goddesses, metaphysically. They were once like us. And they see a supreme being, a supreme creation. And so they're, they're on a very, they're not on a different line of evolution than us. They are, they moved on. So now we would consider them. They're gods of nature, gods of various things, gods of the human heart. But they're all taking a role in their own level of creation. And they too will keep moving on up the line. And so, and yet that line is not like a conveyor belt towards evolution. It is a choice and chosen. And uh, every now and again, I think a spanner gets in the works and it shudders to a halt. And then along comes a foreman and pulls a spanner out and we continue along again. And uh, now, this, us, is a, this is a linear question, but is there an end point to whatever it is? No, no end point. Because there's no um, beginning. Isn't, isn't that no beginning, no end point? Or they both occupy the same moment. I intend to be of that philosophy, that the moment it began, it ended, and the ending was the beginning. And so it's it's like, um, the re it just goes on forever and ever and ever. And, but there is no linear time, and all time occupies the same moment. And so I even discard, discard the Big Bang. That Big Bang is just the linear brain looking for a physical reason for the physical world they see. And the world isn't really physical at all, or the universe. It's all, in, in other words, if you go into a forest, every tree you see is a physical reflection of a greater metaphysical reality. So is the universe the way we see it. It's that physical reflection. But um, don't ask me to give you the maths to prove it, because my brain doesn't work that way. How about giving everyone out there an idea um how to best embrace in a very practical manner on a day-to-day -day basis a greater reality in these challenging times okay live your life as though either two ways to approach it today is the last day of your life and you're going to get everything you can out of it You're going to be in the moment and enjoy the moment for as long as you can. And the moment is eternal. So today is the last day of your life, or today is the day you were born. And your whole life is ahead of you. And you were born exactly the way you are right now. And your whole life is ahead of you. And you're going to suddenly live it in a way that honors you all the way through. Either approach is going to change your life completely and utterly. That's wonderful. Simple and very powerful. We could go all the cliches of do this, do that, but what I said sums it up in a way that honors you. It's all, it's, it's, it's going to work. I now live my life, as far as I'm concerned, life without end. We'll leave the amen. Hopefully women. In other words, <laughs> men are really stuffed up. And so hopefully women can do it better. Now, to be serious, I do not look at my life is in the decline and I'm coming toward the end. My life every day is the best it's ever been. I've never had it so good. I've never felt so wonderful and buoyant. And this day is eternity. That's how I live my life now. I guess the wonder lies in moving beyond beginnings and ends, just embracing eternity here and now in the moment. Yes, just like we go to sleep at night. It's just, a, we just close our eyes and wake up and it's, wow, the more, of the, more of this, this can't get back. And if you keep honoring yourself, it's all the time changing and honoring you more. So not only our universe is honoring you, but another 
49 billion universes begin to honor you. It's good. It's good stuff. <laughs> I, I, if I was to finish on one final note, don't take yourself so damn seriously. Lighten up. Laugh. Enjoy. Just enjoy you. Enjoy you first. You don't have to look for it out there. Enjoy you. That's now, and here is one last question, maybe. Why do human beings have the tendency to take themselves so seriously? Why do we have a tendency to be negative rather than positive? Why? Why do we find fear so much easier than love? I think it's because the it's because the program that was falsely created for us, the subconscious program, has a degree of built-in resistance to change. That's what I think. And we have to break through that simply by being conscious. And when we do, we are all as stronger, more powerful, and lighter for it. Kind of like having to leave the matrix. Yeah, oh, not kind of, exactly, exactly. Or if you're in the big um, globe and the world is watching your life, what was that called? The Truman Show, yeah, like leaving the globe, yeah. It's time for Truman to come on out and realize you're being, it's, it's not quite the way it appears to be. Boy, has Big Brother ever watched you more? Everybody in one of these phones, Basically, they know where your converse, what your conversations are, where you are every moment of the day, and they've almost got it. They'll soon know what you're thinking, what you're watching, what you're doing, what you're enjoying. I don't have one. Which is great because then they can just recommend me more of what I like. <laughs> <laughs> or you can. <laughs> okay, folks. Okay, thank you so much, Michael, for these great reminders. And as always, everyone who's listening, if you enjoy this kind of conversation, make sure to share it with your friends, make sure to like this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, share the channel, and join Michael's courses, uh, buy his books, uh, join his teachings platforms where you can have, uh, if I'm not mistaken, a monthly life session with him, just like this one, um, via Zoom, and you can have access to all his teachings. Um, lots of love to everyone. And you can enjoy your life much more than you currently do. Love you all. Thank you.